What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another view. This time we're going to be taking a look at 1922, based off a Stephen King novella. Now, 1922 stars Thomas Jane, who plays the character known as Wilt, who is a farmer in Nebraska who kills his wife because the wife wanted to sell off their farm. So, as a way to keep the farm, Wilt kills his wife. And in so doing so, a string of unfortunate events happens to this man. All right, so... That's the overall premise of 1922. Now, how do I feel about this movie as a whole? I thought 1922 was actually fairly good. Now, this was a made-for-Netflix movie, and for what it is, I thought it was well done. I think Zach Hilditch, the man who wrote and directed this movie, did a pretty solid job making this film. Uh, I think from a cinematography standpoint, this is a good-looking movie. It, I think it looked the movie, he really captures that 1920s aesthetic. And I'm already a sucker for period piece movies. So just because of that, 1922 gets extra points because it's set in the period set in the period. So we're looking at a different time from a nostalgic lens. And I think from a costume standpoint and a production design standpoint, they really captured and made an authentic looking 1922 landscape. And I like the look of just the farm and like this open cornfield of space. It's very isolated and very atmospheric and creepy to itself as well. So I like all that stuff. Um, from a story standpoint, I think this movie does have a pretty interesting story for the most part. Though I think from a pacing standpoint, this movie kind of suffers a little bit. Now this is a slow burn movie. And slow burn horror movies can be really, really good. See John Carpenter movies. See a movie like Wes Craven. See Alfred Hitchcock. Those are the master of creating slow burn suspense written movies. Now to me, this movie is slow burn, but it's the slow burn that feels like it's just biding its time. And the first 20 minutes of this movie are really kind of slow and you kind of are trying to keep your, it's trying to keep your attention span. But once Wilford and his son Henry kill, you know, kill the mom, the movie kind of picks up steam after that with the son you know, regretting his actions and Will pretty much doing what he had to do in order to just keep his son and keep his farm. So his motivations to kill the wife were clear because the wife wanted to sell and then she wanted to move over to Omaha, open up a dress shop and take the son with her, leaving Will for absolutely nothing. So Will is pretty much a desperate man who pretty much killed his wife out of desperation. But, and I like all that. Not only that, I like how this movie is told in flashback. This movie is pretty much told from Will's perspective, from Will's perspective as him writing a confession to not only the murder, but to the events that took place post-murder. And I just think Thomas Shane's performance all around in this movie is fantastic. If it was any other actor, I don't think it would have been just, it would have, I don't think it would have been as good. Thomas Shane looks like that gruff, just, every man type of person and he fits this role really really well and his performance is rock solid there i dare say he he does he legitimately gives the best performance out of the entire movie because there are some actors in the supporting cast whose acting can fall kind of flat like the son henry his acting ability his acting isn't all that great the wife's acting is okay and neil mcdonough is in this movie who plays uh the the father of the son's girlfriend He's in a handful of scenes, and the movie try to play try to plays it up as him and Will having some sort of a friendship. But I didn't really get enough scenes of McDonough and Jane really selling that. And there's also like a bit, of, and there's also some tension there between the two because it was Henry who knocked up you know the man's daughter, and then they want to run off together. And to me, I think the best part of this movie is kind of like the last thirty minutes, where the ghost of Will's of Wilford of Will's. Uh, of Wilf's wife pretty much haunts him and she looks all chewed up and just gnarly looking because there's this subplot in this movie where every time something happens rats appear out of nowhere and the rats they ate the corpse of his wife and they ate the corpse of his son who in this scene we we get a detailed events of what happened after his son and the girlfriend went away they pretty much become you know bank robbers and bandits and they eventually die with the white with the girlfriend dying while pregnant and in grief Henry shoots himself and when Wilf and when Wilf gets the body of his son 
it's been chewed up by rats. So this is there's this whole subplot of rats. And I think the whole meaning of the rats is that they're there to make Will atone for his actions, which is what he which is what he pays for at the end of the movie, where the rats pretty much find Wilf and pretty much kill him, though off screen, but it's implied that the rats get him. So that stuff is actually pretty cool, and the rats make for something really creepy, particularly in a lot of scenes where one rat just bites Wilf right on the hand, and, and because of so, his hand gets infected and he has to like get amputated. You know, and I, I and I like how Wilf, you know, you feel some sympathetic, some sympathy towards Wilf, but at the same time, you know he committed an atrocious act, and you know that eventually he's going to have to pay for it, which he does. And like I said, the last 30 minutes where the ghost wife is recounting the events to Wilf, I like all that stuff. That, that leads to Wilf's downfall. He has to sell his farm at a low rate because he can't afford, because he can't afford the money. He pretty much he try he tries to sell to um, to Shannon to Neil, to Neil McDonough's character, but he rejects it because his wife has left him and now he's always, now he's a broken man. You know, eventually, like I said, Wilf has to sell to a for a low penny just to get by, which he which he does. But like I said, eventually his chickens come home to roost and he pays for his sins. And I thought and I think that morality tale kind of plays out. You know, like. Wilf did a selfish thing, and in so doing so, he had to pay for his crimes. And I think it was a fitting way to go. And like I said, Thomas Jane's performance in this movie is rock solid. It is excellent. So with all that being said, I'm going to give 1922 a solid 8 out of 10. This is a really good movie. I did enjoy it, but I think that you know some of the acting could be a little clunky here and there. The pacing could be a bit sluggish. The first 20 minutes up to the wife dying can be a, a little boring and tedious to sit through. And even after the wife dies, there's there's a couple of uh, there's some scenes here and there that can be like that, that just seem like filler. But overall, I think it's a very solid movie with solid performances. So yeah, those are my thoughts on 1922. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I will check you back next time for more.